Alright, so before I start this video, I noticed that I have a lot of issues with lighting. So your boy, we out here wilding now. Yeah, we got that backlighting, you feel me? We got that good, good. That good, good. No. Just testing it out how bright we can go. That's too much clear, so we're just gonna... Right there, that's fine. Alright, let's get this video. What is going on ladies and gentlemen and it is your boy on use text here today um, so instead of doing something you know weird gaming related I decided to go over something interesting that I kind of stumbled upon during uh, my YouTube browsing because uh, officially um, I'm, uh, I'm I finished high school so summertime let's go summer vlogs summer gaming summer everything but continuing on <clears throat> um, yes so I was stumbling upon the the interwebs and I found out that uh, you know gonorrhea it has like a like a so like this is like gonorrhea all right you know I, I like super saying into it like super gonorrhea it's achieved a new form it is it so currently I'm looking at the University of Minnesota uh, research upon super gonorrhea cuz yeah super gonorrhea is a real thing it's crazy yeah I didn't know but um so I'm reading this this article. All right. So in late March, an anonymous anonymous report from England's public health agency described a case of gonorrhea that was resistant to both components of the dual antibiotic therapy of. Um, year ago, someone saying that. And I don't know what any of these sound like, so I just I just gonna put both of them in for you. The only remaining recommended treatment for gonorrhea. The infection, which was also resistant to a slew of other antibiotics, was quickly dubbed as super gonorrhea by the UK press. It was the first reported case in the world gonorrhea with combined high level uh, resistance and other resistance for cures of gonorrhea. It certainly won't be the last in following months two similar cases would be reported in Australia. So super gonorrhea was was the you know like gonorrhea and the super form of gonorrhea, uh, UK you know the UK you know boy let me drink my tea, boy let me let me control my colons my colon you know let me try to colonize everything and you know control them and make them pay taxes you know that place, um, basically yeah they called gonorrhea the heavy resistant form of it super gonorrhea. I do love me super gonorrhea. Okay, so it happened. There's also people uh, Australia who got super gonorrhea, which is which is nice. Um, ultimately, the British man's infection was cured, but not until the patient had received three days of of IV treatment with uh, with a last resort antibiotic, normally reserved for severe life threatening infections and not intended for garden variety sexually transmitted diseases. If this was to become the norm, the impact on healthcare services would be huge. Uh, basically, super gonorrhea, you don't fuck with super gonorrhea. The moment you get super gonorrhea, you better go to the hospital, walk in there, and probably say, Hey, yo, bro, run your, run your like, last resort antibiotics because, you know, this gonorrhea, this, this gonorrhea, this hit is ultimate form. Ultimate gonorrhea is going to be upcoming next. Or, or super gonorrhea too. Or we might even get lucky and see Super Gon Super Gonorrhea three, you know, because like in like in Dragon Ball, it got three forms, and then like if if you know if UK people are nasty to the point where it becomes Super Saiyan Gon no Super Gonorrhea God and Super Gonorrhea God Blue. All right. Um. So it's resistance. So when conversations with experts in infectious disease and antibiotic resistance come around to the topic of antibiotic resistant gonorrhea, a common refrain eventually emerges. It's not a matter if gonorrhea will become resistant to the currently recommended antibiotic, antibiotic treatment, but when, when people. All right. So basically it's just like a bunch of quotes, um, continuing on about, I don't know, just the process and other stuff. I'm just going to skip it. Cause don't want to waste your guys' time, but uh, uh, England, no. While this regimen has worked well so far, the expiration date on dual therapy appears to be nearing as resistance to this 
thing ar- arises, this word, you guys you guys can see the word. In preliminary data released late last week, the CDC reported to that the portion resistant isolates in gonorrhea lab specimens rose from 1% in 2013 to more than 4% in 2017. Uh, historically, St. CYR said the CDC has switched to another drug once the 5% threshold was met. All right. Um, rising STD rates. This sounds interesting. So the CDC recently reported data show that number of gonorrhea cases rose by 67% from 2013 to 2017 from 333,004 to 555,608 diagnosed cases. The United Kingdom saw a 22% increase from 2016 to 2017, and those are only diagnosed cases. As experts suggest the true number of infections is likely higher. The uncomfortable reality behind the rise in STDs is the fact that after years of messaging about condom use and safer sex practices, the proliferated in the era of HIV and AIDS, more people are engaging in unprotected sex with a variety of partners and gonorrhea doesn't seem to be on their radar. So kids, if you want to achieve the super sane form of gonorrhea, stay safe. Don't don't out here clapping cheeks. Them, them sweet baby cheeks. All right, not not baby cheeks. Uh, cheeks. Just you know, if you're gonna clap them, do it in a safe, protected manner, and actually research what you're doing because you don't want to be one of those dumbasses that have to go into the ER and specify that you have super gonorrhea and that you need to use the ER's most important antibiotic to cure your dumbass decision. You know, just stay safe. Don't have unprotected sex, and uh, yeah, you'll you'll be fine. I mean. Unless you're one of the unluckies that gets born with it from the start, but we're not getting to that. Um, yeah, uh, pretty much. Uh, I don't feel like you know just going deep into this. Just just a little quick side thing, you know, something new I wanted to try out. But um, we're gonna now. I'm going to explain to you kids how how the the signs and the symptoms of of gonorrhea um, in in women because I I can't find dudes yet. Um, though, but so for all my ladies out there, you know, be sure to, be sure to volume up, be sure to like and subscribe, you feel me? So if you're, if you're a female and, and you know, you want to know if you got gonorrhea or not, or super gonorrhea, be sure to look at, uh, vaginal discharge, you know, painful urination, vaginal bleeding between periods, such as vaginal intercourse, painful intercourse, abdom- abdominal pain or pelvic pain. All right. Now... For male, never mind, I just found it. Super gonorrhea symptoms. Uh, more than half of women with gonorrhea do not have any symptoms. If any symptoms occur, they may include burning, again, burning or frequent urination, yellowish vaginal discharge, redness or swelling of the genitals, burning or itching of the vaginal area. Um, so dudes, stay safe. If your pee hurts, go to your doctor. If your abdomen hurts or you start to see colors that you know wasn't there the night before, uh, you should probably go to the hospital and, uh, yeah, that, that would be pretty good. Pretty good. Um, now, there's an, this is another place that I found about super gonorrhea. Um, the world's first confirmed case of super gonorrhea has been cured. A statement from Public Health England said on Friday the patient's sexually transmitted infection first came. So this is basically the article explaining, so first article is explaining the super gonorrhea and its, you know, its existence. And this article is talking about the, the dude who had super gonorrhea and how they found out like a, a simple short term way to fix his super gonorrhea. And the only reason why I got this web page is because I wanted to find the statement of the of the what's it called? Public Health England. So we're gonna pull up the statement and we're actually gonna get a little quick peek, you feel me? Um so details of a case of multi drug resistant uh super gonorrhea. We're publishing an HPR advanced access report on the 29th of March, 2018. So this is a little bit, a little bit old, um, but it's fine because, uh, you know, your boy out here giving you the latest information, definitely 100%. Um, so let's, you know, resistant, um, uh, two cases of gonorrhea with resistance to, I don't know how to say any of these except pencil, uh, penicillin. That's the only one I can, I can, oh, tetra cycline. Yes, I could be, you know, all these, you know, if you can, if you can, uh, if you can read all these, you know, good on you. I can't. So, uh, have fun. 
uh, have subsequently been reported in Australia. One had sex recently in Southeast Asia. The other case had no recent overseas travel. The strain seen in the UK was isolated from a heterosexual man who had attended sexual health services in England in the early 2018. The case reported one regular female partner in the UK and a female sexual contact in Southeast Asia a month prior to symptom onset. The case was treated empir empirically yes, uh, with c citra, this, this one word again, the, the, the Ceph trioxon. One gram, and you know the other one. A test of cure TOC and the urine NAAT was negative, but the throat swab was culture positive. Reinfection was excluded, including treatment failure. MIC was low, suggesting that this may be an effective therapy, although there are no defined breakpoints. And the patient was successfully treated with three days of IV ertapenemim, IV saving gonorrhea. The investigation core coordinated bunch of efforts um so i don't know basically they're trying all these these uh, antibiotics and like like none of it was helping to do with uh super gonorrhea uh here and um eventually after like three days of being in iv which which by the way would suck would completely suck being bedridden for three days or at least having an iv attached to you ivs are scary dude like like dead ass, hella scary. Like let me let me pull up a tab of an IV, bro. Like this these oh look look at the picture, the picture on the Google page just already. That thing does not look. You don't want that in you. Like it's a it's a big needle. Like like look at this. Like this is sus. Look at this. This dude just out here. Like your life, you, you know, you gotta have this thing in you. It's just you know this thing spills and you're screwed and like. Look, look, they got put all these pins and then they got put bandages on you and like leaves bruises and you got to get all that done because your dumb ass had sex with people that you shouldn't have been having sex with or at least didn't use protection. And then you got to get this. Oh, look, here, I found a picture. Look at this. Look at this, okay? So like you get the difficulty flushing right here and then cool temperature IV site. You get the swelling and then look, all this. This is, this is all, this is an entire tire system all right i ain't no doctor but boy does this not look comfortable oh boy yeah this this is traumatizing i'm going to be showing you all this with me here this is a nice uh uh pictures oh look oh bro like oh oh bro ah bro it's like not fun oh bro there's more pictures here i didn't even look at these bro like they oh is, oh bro i just want to tap oh that's that's not hold up okay since we're, we're pretty much done with the super gonorrhea so if you want to head out well, first now we're going to be bagging on iv needles or at least just no like oh oh right here okay bro why <laughs> these what you can buy iv needles for 469 on ebay Okay, that's another video for another day. All right, I just want to know the sizes. So 18, 20, and 22 gauge needles. One of the important things to know when starting an IV is the proper needle size to use. IV needles are sized by gauges, and the smaller one, the gauge number, the bigger the needle will be. So smaller gauge needles. So 18 gauge, 20, and 22 gauge. I want to see what 18 gauge, 18 gauge IV needle. What is that? All right, 18 gauge IV needle. Ooh. Oh, that, that looks long. That looks... Oh, that's a 22 gauge, all right? You ain't scamming me, McGuff Medical Products. Selling me a 20 gauge when I clearly am looking for an 18 gauge IV needle. Um, though I really want to see how long these things are. No, I can't find pictures, but... I mean, they're just telling me all the... Well, here's a nursing needle stick. So, I mean... Am I trying to watch this video? Maybe for another time. Maybe for another time. But oh, no, they got okay. Sorry, I just saw a weird ad and I can't show it to you because um, that'd be not good. So I'm pretty much done here for today. Super gonorrhea is whack. Um, if you guys want to read up on the things I'm looking at, at if you want to research the things that I was looking at currently, I'll I'll link them down below. So you want to go do some more research and investigate this uh, rare case of super gonorrhea. Um, but thank you guys a lot for you know sticking around and listening to me to uh, you know mumble and and uh, what's it called rant about literally nothing. 
uh, IV needles, but and and super gonorrhea. But uh, I'll try and get better at this entire commentary thing. Um, be sure uh, summer vlog if I go anywhere for summer, I'll be sure to vlog it. And um, yeah, if you you know like the LED lights, and if you have a specific color you want me to put in the next video, be sure to comment down below. I love and appreciate every single one of you. I am unused text, and I'll see you to the next one. Goodbye.